Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rory Hall. I'm a perfusion student at Quinnipiac. Uh, thank you for being here, and thank you for the opportunity to present today. Uh, I have nothing to disclose. <coughs> Uh, the administration of heparin um, is a mainstay practice today in cardiac surgery and cardiopulmonary bypass. Um, heparin must be adequately dosed and monitored in the setting of bypass to maintain proper anticoagulation. Traditionally, uh, an initial dose <coughs> um, is administered at a concentration of 300 or so uh, units per, per kilogram. Uh, its anticoagulant effect is then measured by ACTs in seconds. Target ACTs may vary from facility to facility. Uh, however, once a target is achieved, uh, bypass can be initiated safely. Um, in terms of pharmacokinetics, uh, heparin has a half-life of about an hour, um, and it's metabolized by the liver and excreted renally. Uh, so my question was, um, would an, an impaired clearance of heparin and heparin metabolites uh, alter the effectiveness of the anticoagulant? Um, kidney disease is associated with many risk factors, including hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, atherosclerosis, many of which are also observable in candidates for cardiac surgery. Um, it's not uncommon for cardiac patients to have some degree of renal insufficiency. Uh, in addition to reduced elimination of uh, physiologic waste products, renal insufficiency has been associated with impaired clearance of drugs and drug metabolites. In terms of drug efficacy, this can sometimes be viewed as an inverse relationship with uh, increased renal clearance resulting in decreased concentrations and effects and a decreased renal clearance resulting in increased concentrations and effects. Renal impairment has been shown to affect the pharmacokinetics by impacting the volume of distribution, their ability to bind plasma proteins and uh, efficiency of elimination. Volume of distribution <coughs> represents the ratio of drug in the body to drug in the serum. In renal insufficiency, this representation is skewed by uh, an increase in extracellular fluid, resulting from decreased filtration. This causes an increase in distribution and a decrease in serum concentration. Uh, it's common for many drugs to bind with plasma proteins in the circulation. The portions of drug left unbound remain active and will induce their effect while the bound drug molecules will remain inactive until released. Uh, levels of organic waste, such as uric acid, may accumulate um, in the circulation of patients with renal insufficiency, leading to um, drug displacement from bound proteins. The result of additional unbound drug molecules can result in an unpredictable increase in pharmacologic effect. It was the aim of this study to determine a difference in the total amount of unfractionated heparin required to maintain anticoagulation during bypass for renal patients, renal insufficiency patients. And my hypothesis was that cardiac patients with renal insufficiency would require a lower total dose of heparin during the course of bypass due to decreased elimination. Uh, data was collected between May and December 2018 uh, data for the study group of patients with renal insufficiency was collected from Hartford Hospital in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, the data for the control group of patients without renal insufficiency was collected from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Prior to the procedure, uh, creatinine clearance was estimated using the serum creatinine and the cockroft galt equation, uh, which is used to measure estimated uh, GFR and this was used to determine any degree of renal insufficiency. The equipment used at Hartford was the Terumo System 1 and the iStat with kaolin cartridges for ACTs, and at Beth Israel used the uh, Medtronic BioConsole 560 um, and the Medtronic HMS Plus for ACTs. <coughs> As I mentioned, prior to every case, this, the kharkov galt equation was used to determine renal insufficiency. Serum creatinine levels uh, obtained from the patient's chart were factored into the equation. The normal ranges for creatinine clearance were obtained for the uh, U.S. National Library of Medicine and were 88 to 128 milliliters per minute for females and 97 to 137 milliliters per minute for males. Uh, patients with estimated creatinine clearance levels below those normal ranges were considered to have renal insufficiency and were considered for the study group. 
At the end of each procedure, uh, total urine output and total amount of heparin administered were documented. Um, the exclusion criteria for this, um, this study were patients undergoing aortic surgery, transplants, VADs, emergency surgery, as well as patients who received diuretics, hemoconcentration, uh, dialysis, or transfusion. So primarily, this was patients undergoing cabbage valve or cabbage valve surgery. Uh, the most valuable data in this study was the total heparin dose administered throughout bypass and total urine output. It was thought that a higher level of urine output would indicate increased drug elimination uh, from the circulation, subsequently leading to a higher uh, dose of heparin total. Um, bypass time was also of interest, interest and the uh, anticoagulant effect of heparin as the anticoagulant effect of heparin decreases over time. Uh, due to renal el elimination. Frequency counts and um, percentages were provided for categorical variables, and means and standard deviations were provided for continuous variables. Uh, the relationship between total heparin and renal insufficiency status was evaluated with a simple linear regression model, um, and p-values and Pearson correlation coefficients were provided. With regard to the continuous variables, the results from Hartford showed a mean age of 66.7 years old, mean creatinine levels of 1.5 milligrams per deciliter, and a mean creatinine clearance of 67 milliliters per minute. Mean total urine output was 377.75 milliliters. Mean total heparin was 54,450 units, and the mean bypass time was 94.9 minutes. With regard to categorical variables, the total patient population in the study group was 20. The uh, majority of the patients were male, or 15, and five female patients. The majority of procedures were cabbage. To visualize any potential trends in the relationship between total heparin and estimated creatinine clearance, uh, I created a scatter plot. Um, the data analysis feature in Microsoft Excel was used to uh, determine a p-value. Uh, total heparin and estimated creatinine clearance were used for each patient, and using the simple linear regression model, I calculated a p-value of 0 0.07192, which is um, not considered to be statistically significant, supporting the null hypothesis. Um, continuous variables from Beth Israel, mean age was 59.7 years, mean creatinine levels were uh, 1.0, and mean creatinine clearance was 100.95 milliliters per minute. Mean total urine output was 299. Mean total heparin uh, was 42,350 units. And mean bypass time was 100.2 minutes. Uh, again, with the categorical variables, patient population was 20, 18 males and two females. And <clears throat> once again, the majority of the procedures were cabbage. And here for the Beth Israel results, we have total heparin versus estimated creatinine clearance. Um, and I again used Microsoft Excel to calculate a p-value. Um, the p-value for this was 0 0.0443, which is less than um, 0 0.05, and that is considered statistically significant. And a comparison of total heparin administered between both groups is shown here. The results show the mean total heparin administered was higher in the study group. Uh, given that this study attempted to demonstrate a higher total of heparin needed for the control group, this disproves the hypothesis. Uh, here is a comparison between the um, two groups for urine output. As you can see, there's really not much of a difference there. And here we have a comparison of urine output versus cardiopulmonary bypass time. Uh, the variation in bypass times can affect total urine output, which could blur a correlation between urine output and renal function. And sometimes patients just don't make urine on bypass, regardless of renal function. Total heparin is compared um, here with, with bypass times. And it looks like there is a slight curve upwards, which could be indicative of the fact that more heparin um, is needed over time through longer bypass runs. And here we have <coughs> urine output versus total heparin. 
and using data analysis on Microsoft Excel, I uh, calculated a Pearson correlation coefficient of negative 0 0.03, uh, which indicates that there is no correlation between these variables in this study. So unfortunately, uh, based on these findings, there doesn't appear to be a relationship between urine output and heparin totals. Um, these results also appear to indicate that a reduced creatinine clearance is not necessarily an indicator for a reduced urine output on bypass. Um, heparin can be a difficult uh, medication to study due to its interaction with other molecules other than AT3. Uh, when in circulation, heparin has shown a propensity to bind with plasma proteins, fibrinogen, lipoproteins, endothelial cells, and platelet factor 4. There's a number of limitations I found with this um, study design. Uh, one potential limitation is the use of two different devices for ACT measurement. Uh, when compared to the Medtronic HMS, um, ACT measurements have been shown to be underestimated by the ISTAT. This could lead to additional heparin dosing. The ISTAT was used at Harford Hospital where higher total heparin doses were observed. Um, this could be a possible reason for that. Um, another limitation was the relatively small sample population for a study of this nature. Um, this was limited by collection, data collection for the control group. Um, I found it much more difficult to obtain data from patients who didn't have uh, renal insufficiency or candidates for bypass. Um, differences in techniques may have also had an impact. Uh, crystalloid hemodilution can vary based on patient flow requirements as well as surgical techniques such as the use of irrigation at the field. Uh, one study I found showed evidence of rapid crystalloid hemodilution enhancing coagulation mechanisms in the setting of peripheral vascular surgery. And so conclusively, um, in this study at least, I can say that there was, I found no correlation between total heparin and renal insufficiency. Um, this was a, you know, despite not proving my hypothesis, this still was a, um, good example for and a learning experience for me um, because it demonstrates that tight control is needed for as many variables as possible in any experiment. So thank you very much.